spirit soaring all creation Breathing rainbow well to birth Trinity's imagination Singing joy upon the earth Spirit sighing in creation Rising oceans warming lands Seasons changing creatures dying Havoc brought by human hands God hear our cry For all you've made Renew your world Show us your way God hear our cry For all we've mud Transform our lives Change us we pray Spirit groaning with creation Crying for the planet's mess Longing for its transformation All that's broken to be blessed God hear our cry For all you've made Renew your world Show us your way Transform our lives, change us, we pray. Spirit weaving through creation, bringing mending in our hearts. Hope restoring in the dawning, joining all that is apart. Spirit praying for creation, with a plea too deep for words. For shalom that's coming Bringing healing to God's world God hear our cry For all you've made Renew your world Show us your way God hear our cry For all we've marred Transform we pray Good morning everybody and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and so come come and worship all who woke early and all who slept late. I think we all woke early this morning. All who have been here a long time and for all who have just arrived. Whether we're first or last or somewhere in between, there is room for all of us in God's kingdom and more than enough love and grace to go around. So let us worship God together. Let us pray. God, you are big-hearted with no limitation. You overgive and you overpay, handing us not only the rewards due us, but heaping on us the fortunes of everlasting life and love. We thank you that your kingdom is not just like our earth, that grace does not abide by our rules. We are grateful that our little ways open out to when we listen to you. Lavish your spirit of kindness upon us, Help us to give and to never count the cost. Amen. So if we're able, let us stand and let us sing our first song. Colourful Creator, God of Mystery.
Please be seated, everyone. We come before God with our prayer of confession. Let us pray. God of fruitful labor, work sometimes brings out the worst in us. At home, at school, in the workplace, even in our relationship with you, we too easily question what others do and get instead of taking care of our own business. And so forgive us, God. Take away our bitterness. Teach us the art of the careful, compla compla uh, of the careful complaint. Give us grateful hearts, we pray. Amen. And so hear the good news. What we do matters, but our salvation is God's doing. God hears our complaints, but also hears our prayers, and God will not forget us. In Christ's name, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And as forgiven people, let us share the peace that Jesus brings us. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Lily. <sighs> hello and hello, hello. For those who are young and who are young at heart, we're going to have a seat over here. <laughs> so, hello. There's a story in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, so it's right near the front of the Old Testament. And the Israelite people have escaped from slavery in Egypt and they're wandering out in the wilderness, except there's not a lot of food out there. They didn't bring much when they, when they escaped from Egypt and they're running out of food and so they're getting hungry. And so they ask Moses, what are we going to do? And God provides them with food. Have you heard this story before? He provides them with what's called manna. So they wake up in the morning and a mist has covered the ground and when the mist lifts... There's all this, this bready type food, manna. It's come from God to feed the people. Now, they can't hoard it. They can only collect enough for them to eat that one day because the next day there'll be more food for them to collect. But if they try to hoard it and save it more than they have, it goes off in their, in their storage containers. So they have to get it fresh every day and rely on God to feed them. You know, there's a prayer we pray every Sunday in church called the Lord's Prayer. You remember the Lord's Prayer that we pray sometimes? Or every time in church? Yeah, I remember we say, Our Father who art in heaven, or Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And there's a line in there, the next line. Give us this day our daily bread. Remember that line in the prayer? What do you reckon we're asking God to do when we, when we pray that? Asking God to, to, to provide for us, aren't we? That we can rely on God to provide for us. And that God will provide for us. So we're, it's not just about bread, but I mean, we think bread, yes, give us bread to eat. But it's more than that. It's to help to sustain us, to, to give us what we need to, to live, like, like all sorts of foods. But also clothing as well, so that we can, we can stay warm in winter and cooler in summer. But um, things like we need, that we need to, to, to live with, to live on. Sometimes, though, we can collect too much, can't we? 
we have too many clothes, or maybe we have too many toys, or maybe, maybe there's other things that we don't need anymore, we're just holding on to. What if we shared the stuff that we have extra of? What do you reckon we might do then? I reckon if we did that, if we shared the stuff that we have more of, shared with people who don't have enough, I reckon that's us being like God's hands and feet and helping people to get their daily bread by sharing the extra stuff that we have. Does that make sense? So if we, like for example, with the Philippines, we send things over to the Philippines, don't we, that we have extra of. That we sometimes buy new things even for the Philippines, like spaghetti and other things. And when we send them over to the Philippines and they don't normally have enough of, of, of a lot of things, then in a way we're helping God to give them their daily bread. Also things like, like, um, like Baby Give Back, you know, the, 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 um, the, the charity that helps families, especially mothers and families with, with newborn kids who, who might not be able to afford much themselves to buy the things that, that their babies need and their children need. Well, when we provide for Baby Give Back, when we buy things for that program, then in a way we're hoping to give our daily bread or give, God, give, give daily bread to those people who are in need. It's good to be generous, isn't it? I reckon it is. Because I think God will use our generosity in sharing the things that we have, the sharing the extra things that we have, and even if we have to buy new things, by, by sharing those things with other people, in a way, we're a bit like God's hands and feet, and we're helping to, to share God's daily bread with everybody. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you have blessed us with many things and that we have got a lot of things that, we, that you have provided for us but, but also that we've accumulated over time. And so, Lord God, help us to be generous with those things, that we can share what we have, that we can give them to people and to organisations who will pass them on to people who don't have enough, that we can be providers of your daily bread. Thank you, God. Amen. Thanks, everybody. And so, Paul, would you like to come and bring us our first Bible reading for today? Um, the first Bible reading this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 to 15, page 55 of your Bible. The whole, congregation, the whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, and when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall, now, you shall know what it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he had heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaint of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am, then you should know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the, Lord, when the layer of dew lifted, 
There on the surface of the new wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. So if we're able, let us stand and let us sing once again. God me, O thou great Redeemer. chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the labourers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received their usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked for only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. I am not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me. Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be the first and the first will be the last. This is the word of the Lord.
So I've been reminiscing a lot about my previous experiences of growing up these past few weeks. At the start of the month, I was reminded of the various groups and teams that, and clubs that I've been, uh, been a part of over the course of my life and, and how I found that being a part of something that is greater than myself is important. Though my connection with the church, the body of Christ, is of the greatest importance. It is for me and I hope it is for you as well. And then two weeks ago, I was reminded of the neighbours that I've lived next door to and how I found that it is good to be friendly with my neighbours, on friendly terms with them. And this is helpful in case any disputes might arise. Remember, this was in response to Jesus' instructions to his followers on, on how they should resolve conflicts within the congregation. And then last week, I was reminded of my travels throughout this vast land of Australia as we celebrated Land Sunday as part of the season of creation. And we discovered or rediscovered our special relationship to, to care for the land and everything that God has made. Which then brings us to this week. For on reading the Bible passage from Exodus and from Matthew, another aspect of my past came to mind, particularly from my childhood. And that is the words that I often cried out if I thought that I was being hard done by, either by my parents or my teachers or my brother and my sister. Though I'm certain that this, this cry was not only me who utters it, I'm sure that probably all of us have done so at some point. Do you know what that cry could be? It's not fair. It's exactly right. Just imagine the scenario. There I was as a kid, along with my younger, and brothers, younger brother and sister, and, and mum then gives each of us a slice of cake, but I get the smallest piece. It's not fair. Or... I want to sit in the front seat of the car and being the oldest, surely that is my right to sit in the front seat of the car, but then my brother beats me to the front passenger door. What do I say? It's not fair. Or I'm grounded for something that I didn't do because it was totally the fault of my brother and my sister. Yes, once more we're feeling, it's not fair. <laughs> of course, if I ever receive some advantage over my siblings, like getting the biggest slice of cake, or getting to the front passenger seat first, or, or being able to blame something on my siblings when it was totally my fault, well, that's always fair, isn't it? It was only ever not fair whenever I was at a perceived disadvantage. And so I wonder then if the people in our scripture passages for today might have uttered also the cry of, it's not fair, after they experienced what they did. We read that the Israelites out in the wilderness cry this almost at exactly this, or cry almost exactly this, this phrase as they complain to Moses about their lack of food there. It's not fair. And then in Jesus' parable, the laborers hired to work in the vineyard cry this as they too were paid the same as everyone else, no matter how much work they'd done. It's not fair. Was their cry justified? Well, let's explore these passages and, and find out. So a passage from Matthew's Gospel has Jesus sharing with his disciples and us to a parable that highlights one more aspect of the kingdom of heaven. Of course, it's not the first time that Jesus does this, and it won't be the last either. But this particular aspect of the kingdom of heaven might be a little more challenging for those of us who have a definite sense of what we believe to be fair. You see, Jesus' lesson comes after an event that perplexes his disciples, for they had just seen a wealthy young man leave despondently after asking Jesus what he must do to receive eternal life. Jesus tells the man that he must give up everything that he owns and follow him if he is to receive what he wants. This grieved the man greatly, for he owned many possessions, and he didn't want to give them up. After the man leaves, Peter then reminds Jesus that they had given up everything to follow him. Family, work, friends. And so he asks, he asks Jesus what they will receive for their sacrifice. To which Jesus responds by telling them that they will be greatly rewarded. For those who are first will be last. And those who are last will be first. It is then that Jesus tells this parable to describe what it means. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner hiring labourers to work in his vineyard. He goes out early in the morning and finds a number of them waiting there in the usual place. And after they agreed to the usual daily wage, about one denarius, he sends them off to work. 
about nine o'clock, the landowner finds more labourers waiting for work. And so he hires them too. As the day progresses, the landowner goes out again and again and again and finds more labourers to work the vineyard, even at five o'clock in the afternoon, just an hour before finishing time, the landowner finds more labourers seeking work and without hesitation, he hires them as well. At the end of the day, the landowner calls the labourers together to receive their wage. Starting with those who are hired at the end of the day, the landowner pays them the usual daily wage. This is at about one denarius. Then he progresses through all the labourers and each one is paid at exactly the same amount regardless of what time of day they were hired. Can you imagine the thoughts of those who are working the longest being paid the same as those who had worked the shortest? Yep, it's not fair. And this is exactly the sentiment those workers who were hired at the very, end, the very start of the day, those who worked the longest in the heat of the day, they grumbled against the landowner, complaining about his generosity to those who had worked less than them. At this point, the landowner reminds the workers that he paid them what they had agreed to when they were hired and that he was entitled to be as generous as he liked with what he had. Of course, in the parable, the landowner is God and the workers are those who follow Jesus. And it is a good reminder that God chooses to give the same to everyone what is God's to give, love, life and grace. But still, surely there must be some reward for those who have chosen to follow Jesus at the very beginning. Surely it's only fair for those who have stood by Jesus the longest, those who have sacrificed everything to follow him, surely they will be rewarded more greatly than those who have only done some or even a little or even none of those things at all. It just wouldn't be fair if they weren't rewarded, would it? Well, hold on to this thought as we turn our passage to Exodus where we find the Israelite people led by Moses and Aaron out in the wilderness after being freed from slavery in Egypt. The Israelites complained a lot, didn't they? Here they are, freed after generations of slavery in Egypt, complaining and complaining and complaining about the conditions that they had to endure in the desert. And they even wished that they had remained in Egypt in slavery. I mean, not long before, they had all witnessed the awesome power of God in allowing them to escape from the pursuing Pharaoh's army as God parted the waters of the sea for them to pass through and then for the sea to close over their pursuers, drowning them all. Surely the Israelites could have held on to some faith that God wouldn't let them starve, in the, starve to death in the wilderness. But they didn't seem to. And so can you hear their collective cry of, it's not fair. Of course, God was not going to let them starve and God provided the Israelites with manna, enough food to sustain them for the whole day, but not enough for them to hoard. The people had to trust wholly on God, trust that God would provide them with what they would need to survive. Of course, as time went on, they did begin to trust God and as, as God was forming them into the people and into the nation that God intended them to be, teaching them the way to live a way that was different to the way they knew in Egypt, a way that was different to any earthly kingdom for that matter, a way where all were included, all were cared for, all were loved by God. But old ways die hard, and the forming God was doing would take a long time, so long that it was still going on when Jesus shared this parable about the nature of God's kingdom, reminding those listening that they could wholly trust in God for God would provide them with everything that they needed in their current circumstances and in God's kingdom to come. Of course, this also has implications for us today as well, both in our current circumstances and in God's kingdom to come. For God continues forming us into God's people. But we're still not there yet, are we? We still want more than we need. We still feel entitled to more than we have been given. We still cry out, it's not fair, when we perceive that someone is receiving more than we think that they ought to receive. And I wonder who might those people be in our society, those we might believe are receiving more than us, who are getting more than we think they deserve. Maybe they are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, 
asking for their voice to be heard. Or maybe they are refugees, people seeking asylum who are perceived to be jumping the queue to get to Australia. Or maybe they are people who are unemployed, people who receive government benefits. Or maybe it's all of them. I often hear people crying it's not fair about the generous benefits or special treatment that these groups of people supposedly receive. Although in comparison, these treatments are not really special and the benefits are far less than what is required to live on. Sometimes though I reckon that the cry of it's not fair is, is, is actually justified when some take and hoard far more than they need and do not share with those who don't have enough including individuals and communities, corporations and nations. Take, for example, the large corporations reporting record profits that are accrued through inflated prices of goods and services such as food and energy, thus causing many people to suffer as they cannot afford to buy what they need to live on. Then there are some landlords who are raising rents, the rents of their properties, by amounts that far exceed the costs that they are accruing, uh, uh, sorry, that they are, they are having. And that causes people to be evicted from their homes because they cannot afford to pay these inflated rents. Surely this isn't fair, is it? And in our season of creation, I would be remiss not to mention Earth Overshoot Day, which marks the day that humanity's demand for ecological resources in a given year exceeds the capacity of the Earth to regenerate those resources in that year. So for example, when human activity releases more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere than the Earth is capable of absorbing in that year, we've overshot. Or when human activity destroys more forests than the Earth can regenerate in a year, then we've overshot. Each year since 1970, the date of Earth Overshoot Day has been getting earlier and earlier. And the date for this year, Earth Overshoot Day, was the 2nd of August, almost two months ago. And so we now need around 1.7 planets to maintain our yearly demand for resources. Essentially, we are stealing the, from future generations as we use Earth's resources from future years now. And so I reckon it, it's understandable that our school students are protesting and crying out, it's not fair, for it is those who will come after us, our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, who will be paying for what we are spending now on a much depleted and damaged planet. And so surely their outcry is justified. For the most part, we do receive what we need and much more. And so we must be willing to share what we have, both individually and collectively, so that no one is left without. And as we discover in this parable, this is how God's kingdom works. God actively seeks out people to enter, going out again and again and again to ensure that no one is left behind and that everyone will receive equally what they deserve, love and grace and life in abundance. And so let us be grateful and give thanks to God for what we have received. For through God's provision, we have received all that we need as individuals and as a community. And of course, that includes the love and the grace of God. And let us share what we have with those who don't have enough, share wealth and resources with those who suffer, with those who are poor, with those who don't have a voice. For when we share what God has blessed us with, we are helping God's, the kingdom of heaven to grow larger because more and more people are included more and more people will also share then in the work to spread the love and kindness and inclusion and the grace of God, thus growing God's kingdom even more. That sounds fair to me. Does that sound fair to you as well? Amen. And so in response, I thought we could sing this song, For the Fruits of All Creation. So if we're able, let us stand and let us sing.
Please be seated, everybody. Freely we have received, so let us freely give our offering to the Lord. Holy God, we thank you that you've blessed us with these gifts to share. Gifts of money and resources, but you've also given us our lives, and so we offer them to you as well. And so, Lord God, use these gifts and use us in the sharing of your kingdom so that it continues to grow. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, everyone. Please be seated. Jeff, what are we noticing today? We don't uh, usually welcome people back from holidays, but if you've been away for over three months, you probably deserve a welcome back. So <laughs> welcome back to Leanne and Russell. Uh, good to have you back home again. Uh, yes, yesterday uh, there were uh, there was a small group of people from uh, here and from the um, Anglican Church, St Catherine's, who did the Camino walk at Rocks Riverside Park. You might have seen a notice about that in Centenary Life. Um, it followed the stations of a cross in uh, in a lovely natural environment and uh, was a very meaningful experience. It was over two hours, <coughs> so probably a little demanding for some, but we thought it was such a good experience that um, uh, Craig and Liz at the uh, St Catharines are going to uh, look at doing that again at Easter. Uh, it would be a very appropriate uh, opportunity uh, to do it. <coughs> and also to, um, because that one is fairly demanding, co covering two hours and a bit of incline uh, in it as far as the walking goes, um, also to look at a, a modified version of it so that we can involve more people and also involve families uh, in the experience. So uh, we look forward to doing that again uh, next, uh, next Easter. Also, as part of Season of Creation, uh, there's always a blessing of the animals uh, opportunity and uh, St Catharines have taken that on board as well this year. So there, is, there will be a blessing of the animals uh, service at St Catharines on the Sunday the 8th of October at 11 o'clock, uh, followed by a sausage sizzle. And uh, we're invited uh, to attend that if we'd like to. Um, if, if you have uh, that, so there'll be a pet blessing and um, you can either take your pet or take a photo of your pet and uh, that experience will be available uh, there at St Catharines on the 8th of October. Uh, this evening, uh, Cafe Church is on at uh, 5 o'clock, uh, so uh, if you'd like to, to join us on the veranda at 5, you'd be most welcome. If you're happy to bring a plate of food to share, uh, it's a lovely time to, to spend together, uh, especially this time of year. 
And um, so it's an opportunity where we can gather. We can we gather around tables around there, so we can sit families together, so that there be there be some good conversation together. Uh, we share food together, and we share uh, the liturgy. And uh, it's a, a lovely time of fellowship with each other uh, and with God. So uh, I encourage you to to think about that if you haven't been part of Cafe Church before. Uh, it's uh, on the last Sunday of each month. And so that'll be at five o'clock this evening. Also, uh, on the last Sunday of the month, uh, up at Rosemount, there's always the hymn singing in the afternoon. So that's on again this afternoon between two o'clock and four o'clock, uh, and afternoon tea is provided. So very welcome to attend that at Rosemount this afternoon. Men's coffee is on this week, Thursday, 10 o'clock, also at Rosemount. Don't forget, uh, with our Philippines project um, drawing to a close this year, the, uh, a few more weeks where you can bring along packet spaghetti and also we're trying to include uh, small balls, tennis balls and the like, and small cars uh, uh, that uh, become part of our Christmas gift uh, to families in, in the Philippines. So a few more w weeks for that opportunity. And I just want to encourage you to think about the Bible study that we're organising from around about mid-October. Uh, it's called the Advent Conspiracy. Um, and it's a, a study that will be over four weeks and it will help us to think meaningfully about the seasons of Advent and Christmas uh, before we get into them uh, in order that we might uh, make the most of that, that season of the year uh, and not allow it to be hijacked by other other. It's so easy to be, for that season to be hijacked by other distractions. And this is a study that helps us to focus on how we can meaningfully experience the season of Advent. Uh, so pop your names down on the, uh, on the sheet out on the veranda if you'd like to participate. Um, there's a Monday evening and a Thursday evening opportunity. If you can write down that you're happy to do either, we might just see how many people are interested and we may just have it on one of those evenings. But uh, if you could indicate uh, if you're happy to do either, otherwise put Monday and Thursday or Thursday evening. There's a number of people already down for Wednesday afternoon, uh, so that will certainly be happening. And uh, we have a young adults group meeting on Sunday evenings after, after worship. And um, lastly, I'd just like to show you a picture uh, of uh, the Lower Church Garden. So there's a new enhancement down there in the Lower Church Garden, thanks to Peter Bishop. Um, I think also thanks to Rosemount, because I think I've seen it up there before. And um, so that uh, is a lovely feature to enhance the garden down in the, in the lower area down there. Um, so thanks, Peter, for that. Um, it's, if you get an opportunity just to have a look out the windows over there, the garden is really flourishing down in that area. So um, if you have an opportunity, if you're physically capable of getting down there, I'm sorry it's not easy to access. Um, perhaps one day it will, uh, there'll be better access. Uh, the garden's looking lovely down there. And uh, so if you uh, are able to get down and have a look, uh, I'm sure uh, you'll really appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. I had to have a little bit of a giggle about his blessing the animals and the barbecue. I thought first we bless the animals and then we eat them. So <laughs> let us come together in prayer. Oh, sorry. Right. <laughs> let us pray. Lord, may this be a day of kind words, of listening, of patience, generosity of time, skill and resources. Lord, may this be a day of giving and receiving, both seeing and feeling the blessings of your love. Lord, may this be a day of comfort and healing, of friendship and truthfulness, honesty and openness. Lord, may this be a day to bring a smile to your face. May we look at others as if through your eyes, less judging, more loving, and seeing them like us as not perfect or finished but as a work in progress that will be completed in due time by your hands. Show us, Lord, how to love my neighbour, not the one we get on really well with, go for a drink and enjoy time out with, not the one we see at church each week and sees the world as we do, generally, 
Not the one who lives along the street with whom we share our thoughts about the weather with. Show us, Lord, how to love the neighbour we avoid. The one we struggle with whose views and outlook on life we disagree with, whose lifestyle seems so different to ours. Show us, Lord, how, as you loved others, including even one such as me, so that we can hold out our hands of friendship and love to all who in your eyes are neighbours, your children, truly loved by you. Today, Lord, we bring to you the forgotten people, who were on TV headlines just a few weeks ago. The earthquakes, earthquakes in Morocco, the war in Ukraine, flooding in Libya, people still dying for lack of aid, of medical provision, still seeing their world crumbling into dust beneath their tired bodies. Forgive us when we talk about tragedies of refugees and atrocities in so many parts of the world simply in terms of numbers, rather than mothers and fathers, grandparents, boys and girls, babes in arms, lost homes and livelihoods, and the dead they have left behind. So many individual tragedies, so many broken lives to rebuild. May your love surround them and, and hardened hearts be softened to the plight of these your children. God of compassion and mercy, we pray. Lord, we pray for those this morning whose nights are broken by pain, by discomfort, anxiety, worries, and who, by caring duties, noisy neighbours, and so many other reasons, leaving them irritable and stressed. Refresh their minds, grant patience in time of stress, and keep them safe in their daily tasks and in night time to come, may they find rest and peace. Dear Lord, as the seasons change, be with all those, for whatever reason, have nowhere that can be called home, who lay their head in shop doorways, under bridges, in tents or in cars, and in temporary shelters, until once again moved on. Bless those who nightly offer hot food and drink, a listening ear and bring head healing, wholeness, peace, and a renewed hope to those forgotten people. Bless the place we call home, be it a mansion or an apartment, a humble home or a flat, makeshift or permanent, a thing of beauty or an embarrassment. Bless the people within, old, young, middle-aged. Bless the conversation within, love shared, prayers prayed wherever, whatever it might be. Bless the place that we call home. This week, Lord, speak to us through your word. Speak to us through your world. Speak to us through our friends. Speak to us through our enemies. Speak to us through sunny days. Speak to us through storm and rain. Speak to us through joyful times. Speak to us through grief and pain. Speak to us, make us listeners. Speak to us, make us learners. Speak to us, make us doers, so that our lives can speak to others. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Charlie. So if we're able, let us stand once more. And let us sing, shine, Jesus, shine.
light. So go out from here as, as workers in God's upside down kingdom, where the last are first and the first are last, where needs are met and where there's grace enough for all. And may the blessing of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit surround you and sustain you in the coming days. Amen. Let us turn to one another as we share the, the Mitzvah benediction. May the Lord watch between me and thee, whilst we're absent, one from the other. Amen.